Oh, guys. Well, what we got here on the table is the uh, Maxim Maxon SM4000 series. Can you see that? Well, it's hard to get an angle on this, but it. I'll read it out. It's the SM4450 SC radio, two way mobile uh, UHF. It's uh, 450 to 470 megahertz. And we're going to look inside. Now, this radio is dead. There's the knobs off, its buttons broke here. I have about 50 of these in a pile, and this is one of the dead ones. There's no doubt that I could fix it, but it's wideband, so I'm not going to worry with it. So, we're going to tear it down for you now, how to get into these radios I, I've already popped the side but how you would get into it is a slotted screwdriver in and pop this up and that pulls off this uh, case which has been painted there and we can see the innards and we'll try to go through this with you starting from the front we have our ribbon cable that goes to the front panel the LCD well not LCD but the VFD the vacuum fluorescent display these three LEDs and these buttons which are also lit by LEDs the ribbon and you see the limiting uh, resistors here the uh, lines and the, the uh, VFD drivers you have our microprocessor here this is a Timic 229-5031 SM4000. It's, it's an Intel built processor for this radio. And we have the Atmel, Atmel 819. It's a 93C56 E, e squared prom. EE prom this right here we have this port here this white port is where you would plug in the programming cable the SMC 4000 serial programming cable which plugs in here and it's got a little power wire that goes back here to this pin for power for the power on the uh, the max 236 chip inside the head of the serial cable and then you also have interfaces here for repeater operation or telephone or whatever remote control stuff there yeah. um, here we have this is our data ribbon here's our rainbow track cable with the mate and lock or Molex or whatever that powers the speaker the potentiometers on the front it also goes to some other stuff on that and what we're going to do We'll pull the top completely off. Like I said, it doesn't matter if I break anything on this radio. It's it's already fried. Right here on this line here, this is the audio circuitry. And also some power uh, circuitry rectification stuff. On that. We're going to go and pop the bottom off too. The bottom pops off the same way. And you can see that. Just put that under there and pop it right off this is the RF board this is where all the magic happens with the radio the transmitter who power main uh, 12 volts is in here we're not interested in that part I am interested in getting the face off because you know, it requires both sides to be off and I may or may not take this whole back off because you could probably see all the screws in it I might jump cut I've worked on these radios hundreds of times in the field, in the shop. All right, we'll get this off. First thing is first, we're going to pull this rainbow track out and then we'll ribbon pull this one. And you can see there's a speaker. Here's all your audio feed. Here's your VFD display ribbon, and here is your buttons and LED ribbon. Uh, track OLX cable here. This is for the buttons. The LEDs are here on this one. 
the VFD display is right in here is on this track this uh, ribbon and all your audio uh, stuff squelch control speaker volume is on this ribbon simple enough huh okay back to the is your audio circuitry mostly right here we have a the DCS and CTCSS uh, modulation controls is, is here so have the op amps DCS encoders this is all part of the audio and all part of when I say audio it also makes with the uh, PL and DPL encoder and what I'm unscrewing now is the RF protection plate for the VC the VCO circuitry the PLL circuitry basically what we call it and there is a procedure to tune these radios to go out of into ham radio bands by doing you know adjusting this TC13 and taking readings off of this test point with a voltmeter I'm not going to go into that because this radio is dead so that comes off this is your PLL circuit right here. <coughs> this is your part of your oscillator where it's starting to get all its RF together. This is all part of your PLL system. Here's RF lines and this is your adjustment and you would take a bolt reading from ground to here and adjust this to lock the PLL circuit, PLL circuit to whatever band split you wanted and so if you wanted it down to 440 for ham you uh, program it the radio would go into a panic and you know beeping and you would tune this until it quit beeping and then find it until you got the proper voltage reading across here and then it's the PLL is locked when it's the room. And you also have some jumper links here the jumper links were for options pertaining to these pins and things I have a service manual for these radios fortunately I don't have it with me uh, on these headers here is the audio relay board which controls an external speaker that would plug in auxiliary and external speaker which was in turn controlled by one of these two one or two buttons here a priority scan one or two you can control it with one of these auxiliary buttons and turn it with the program setup now on this side is the all the RF this is where all the radio frequency magic happens <laughs> I don't know if you can see it but there's an RF line that runs through and it plugs in the bottom of this board you'll see that in a minute once I get it all of these screws out this screwdrivers about had it now I might leave you for a minute so I'm gonna screw all this I'll be right back okay I am back and we got this plate off at the shield for the RF section you can see our main power cable is here had a screw holding it, strain relief. These were a common failure in these radios sometimes, these things here. We have some more audio processing. Looks like, no, wait, this is, what is this? Smoothing capacitors protection diode. It looks like an adjustment here. I can't remember what all this is, but here's the RF line coming from the command board to the RF board. And this, I could pretty much tell you what these circuits are doing. Here's some more filtering here. It's obviously receiver filtering. Um, this section right here is the transmitter. This is the main uh, transmitter circuits. And this is a multi-stage. You have a pre-driver pre here that kicks up off of this stage. This is the first stage. And you have a small low power driver here. And then you have your MFR650, your 40 watt driver here. 
with 50 watts, depending on the model of the radio. And then you come out with some more filtering and out to your antenna. Now in here is a pin diode and a, some other circuits that went off to this section up here and these which are the receiver filters and your PLL injection you know things like that this is your power control circuitry here all of this you have some you know, FETs and things in here caps just your typical radio layout um, this is on one side um, the chassis is aluminum of course and the heat is dissipated here PL SO238 accepts a PL259 and the command board over here this is your microphone jack on the side you have your decoupling caps and all that nonsense there it's pretty straightforward uh, there's not much to it easy easy things to work on um, consider it tore down I'm not going to take the boards off of the chassis but I am going to later on troubleshoot it and see exactly what's wrong. I think the PLL's out of lock on it, really. I just, but I have so many that I can sacrifice it if it's bad. But in its day, this was a cheaper solution for communications of 40 watts or 50 watts for VHF, 40 watts for UHF, and it got the job done. Uh, there are still a few people in the world that use these radios and GMRS frequencies in the United States um, but they're no longer type accepted for commercial use in the US due to narrow banding rules so yeah there it is there's the the Maxon SM4000. Um, also, GE, General Electric, Ericsson, made the monogram, which is the same radio, but the faceplate says Ericsson on it. <laughs> it takes the same programmer, everything is the same. Yeah, that's the SM4000. Um, be sure to like and, and sub. And I have more stuff coming on the way. And I'll see you guys later.